It was 2002, but it could have been 1945 or 1961. My friend Dan and I were on a train cruising the Ohio countryside behind a former Grand Trunk Western U3B-484. Well, maybe that's the wrong word. We weren't doing anything as leisurely as cruising. We were, what, storming, scorching, hustling, just plain wailing, whatever. We were going fast. It was October 19th, 2002, and Ohio Central's ex-GTW 6325 was on the point of an excursion train from Coshocton to Columbus. Watching it all from a Dutch door about two cars back, Dan and I were riding the perfect time machine. And the sights, sounds, and smells of that day tapped into my memory in ways that I did not expect. On that trip, 6325 was in her second season of service after Ohio Central shop forces had spent years lovingly restoring her. Ohio Central CEO Jerry Jacobson had personally bought 6325 from a volunteer group overwhelmed in their efforts to restore the engine after it had been neglected during 20-some years of display in Battle Creek, Michigan. In 2001, he successfully brought the 1942 Alco back to life. I've always been partial to GTW's U3Bs. In 1960, I watched the last four of the original fleet of 25 be part of closing the door on the more than 130-year steam era of United States Railroad. At age 11, I rode in the cab of one of them on a commuter train between Detroit and Pontiac, Michigan. A few days later, I rode one section of what is considered to be the country's last regularly scheduled steam passenger train, pulled by 6319 and 6322, on March 27, 1960. Following year, I rode and watched excursions throughout southern Michigan behind the last U3B owned by GTW, 6323. On September 17, 1961, Dan and I and some other of our junior high friends rode behind 6323 on her last excursion from Detroit to Bay City, Michigan and return. GTW had been favorable toward special steam excursions, but 6323's days were literally numbered. Legal flu time was to expire that week and the railroad would not undertake the expensive refurbishment. It was a simple train with a baggage car followed by a string of heavyweight coaches. Bringing up the rear, was rolling stock that would be scandalous in today's lawsuit-happy, liability, paranoid excursion climate. Passengers could ride two open gondola cars at a caboose. The baggage car was a special place for me on that excursion. In those days, baggage cars were a regular part of excursions with their huge doors kept open, albeit with wooden slats across them for safety's sake. They were the haven of audio files. One could ride mile after mile, listening to the symphony just out the front door. I fondly recall the closing hour or so of 6323's last excursion as I rode the baggage car in the dark on that fall evening in 1961. 
enjoying the cool, damp air and the songs of industry from the star iron horse up front. I was loving every minute of it. Away with diesels, how could what I was experiencing be allowed to pass from the face of the earth? The voyage ended that night in Detroit for my friends and me a few miles earlier in suburban Royal Oak. Following purchase by a private individual, Fred Crew, 6323 was stored in the roundhouse of the Detroit Terminal Railroad. There she stayed for decades, with the roundhouse literally falling down around her until she was acquired by the Illinois Railroad Museum. And that's where she is now displayed. The only other survivor of the class, 6325. And for me, she became the perfect time machine. Okay, explain to me what it's all about. Well, it's raining. It's raining. Yeah, it's raining. It's about, what, 6.30 in the morning or so. We're getting ready to go to Cohocton, Cochocton, on a Columbus, right behind Diesel. And put that way back, right behind it, U3B Northern, and next to Grand Trunk Western 6325. First time you see this thing, you've ridden behind one of these things since uh, September 17th, 1961. 42 years, almost to the day. 41 years, almost to the day. It's exciting. Does that make you an old guy? Only, only in stature. Black on black. I'm still 14. Black on black. Black on black. What happened in the last 40 years? As our 13-car train diesel to meet 6325 in Coshocton, Ohio, I wondered what it would be like to see a live U3B once again. At Coshocton, after passengers unloaded to be bussed to a local festival, the diesels trundled the train a few miles down the line to the Ohio Central shops to pick up 6325. Not interested in the festival, Dan and I passed the time with a leisurely lunch at a restaurant run since 1939 by a couple of comic old brothers. When in Coshocton, go to Workman's Restaurant. You'll get a good meal and a good laugh. They're funny guys. The, the thing is, you guys, you guys look just like your painting. That's what it like. They look just like the guys in the painting. <laughs> Amazing. That's amazing how that... This restaurant with a, with, a, with a painting up there looks just like them. Yeah, that's incredible. How it's, they, incredible. It's, it's a theme park. It's amazing. They created a restaurant, a, a restaurant around a painting. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. Workman's was fun, but no sooner had we gone back a block or so to trackside when we heard the unmistakable sound of a steam locomotive whistle. Daniel J, this is the kind of locomotive that we've been looking at for many years. It's coming. And it's coming. It's on its way. We just heard it. There she was, white smoke against the cloudy sky, the engineer whistling away probably more than was necessary. After all, this was showbiz of sorts. And in the industrial age, steam engines were the original drama queens. Paul and Mary once sang that little boys get old, but dragons never do. It's true, Dan and I had moved over the 40 years from junior high to middle age, but one of the fire-breathing dragons of our youth 
still roam the rails much like it did when we were kids. For four decades, I had reviewed motion pictures, still photos, recordings, and memories of steam locomotives, especially U-3Bs. As 6325 pulled us across Ohio, it all came back. We stopped for a photo run. Look at that, I thought. That looks just like a U-3B dashing across a Michigan countryside as they used to do so long ago. And there, the view of the engine and the pattern of steam and smoke reminded me of riding a Detroit commuter train behind 6323 on a winter day in 1960. And so it went. All through the run. 6325 playing deja vu with my head. Dan later said, the whole day was like something out of the twilight zone, that we had somehow been transported back in time. There were some experiences that could only be savored in the present. Speed was one of them. I've heard stories of U-3Bs flaming the rails on GTW's Chicago division. We got a taste of it on CSX, over which Ohio Central has trackage rights between Newark and Columbus. I don't know how fast 6325 went, but when you can barely get your head out of a Dutch door because a hurricane is driving cinders into your face like rocks, when the whistle is hysterical, the exhaust is staccato and slipping at speed three times no less, and grown men are cheering, you know there is something special going on time machine? Ha! Ah, this was happening right now. A bit later, there was a visual treat in store. Sad to say, 6325 suffered a bearing problem arriving in Columbus. The diesels that had been idling on the back of the train limped us in the last mile. The passengers detrained, and while the 6325's handlers worked on her lame driver, the crowds dispersed, and two or three of us, still hanging around with cameras, were treated to our own dusk to nighttime photo session.
Later, 6325 slowly began a reverse roll, pulled back to Coshocton by the diesels. It was the end of a great trip, a great trip in the perfect time machine.